Hello fellow modelers, uh, it's Bruce here. Um, just want to take a little trip in the time machine, turn the clock back to a time when uh, there was quite a market for HO scale locomotive kits. And there were a lot of modelers who were buying those kits and assembling them. And uh, up in the forefront of that was Varney as I've talked about in one of my other videos. And uh, many uh, modelers started out with uh, their little Dockside 040 Little Joe switcher. Uh, and one of those modelers was my dad, who I would say it was in the late 1950s, assembled this Little Joe. And uh, I still have it. I still run it from time to time. I have not yet done any, other than maintenance, I have not done any uh, real refurbishing, but I think uh, perhaps it's about time to strip that paint off and uh, uh, give it a new paint job and uh, perhaps a new lease on life. But along with that healthy market for the kits, American entrepreneurs being who they are, there came another market of detail parts uh, being offered by a couple different uh, vendors uh, that you could really fancy up your your models once you assembled your kit. And that included the Little Joe. The, uh, I'll start with my dad's. And uh, this is pretty much uh, plain Jane. Um, in particular, I want you to look at uh, the, the absence of any real valve gear. And, uh, you know, you got uh, basically a side rod there, and uh, there is a, a rod going into the uh, cylinder here, but it's uh, certainly nothing fancy. Um, otherwise, other than upgrading the uh, couplers, this is pretty much the way Dad built it. I would say one other thing, I guess, and that is that... Uh, <laughs> I don't know whether Dad had a quarter of the wheels or not, but I think they're a little bit off because when this thing goes down the track, it has a cute little wobble to it, back and forth like this, and uh, I've kind of gotten used to it and haven't tinkered with it. But uh, you know, that's kind of where we are. It's got the characteristic uh, V for Varney on the. Uh, yeah, let's see if I can. This is always where I get in trouble because I forget to zoom back out. But let's uh, zoom in a minute and see if you can see the V for Varney. Yes, you can. Um, very characteristic of uh, the early Varney locomotives and the Little Joe switchers in particular. And they all had a front uh, uh, number in the... Uh, here called, I think it was 86. No, it was 98. So that's old number 98. I think at one time Dad had a jewel in there, but that's long gone. And the same one with the one in the back. So, plain Jane, nothing upgraded. Back in that time period, one of those entrepreneurs that came out with uh, upgrade items for the little Joe was Chemtron. Today, Chemtron can only really be found on the used market, but you can still find uh, Chemt uh, Chemtron uh, detail parts from time to time on eBay or other auction sites. And uh, of course CalScale, much more familiar to today's modelers. Uh, their detail parts are still in, in uh, ready supply. Anything from bells and whistles to uh, steam domes and uh, sand pipes and uh, anything that you could think of, all the detail parts for the back of the boiler and so forth. So you can get as fancy as you want in upgrading your locomotives. But what I really want to focus on, and I'll go through Chemtron's add-ons on this little Joe. Uh, what I really want to focus on is the add-ons of uh, all the valve gear that uh, Chemtron and other manufacturers were offering at the time. So let's look at how this particular uh, Varney Little Joe got upgraded. Uh, it has 
three major upgrades, um, all from Chemtron. First of all, Chemtron made a brass, um, I'll show you the back of these two cabs, okay, for a comparison. And let me zoom out a little bit. Okay. They made a cab forward uh, brass uh, cab end there and uh, called it the, I think, Southern Pacific uh, box uh, end cab or, or cab forward um, add on uh, with a little cow catcher. And uh, whoever owned this initially upgraded that. They also offered, um, excuse me, a four wheel truck two of which wheels were pickups uh, for when you were running it cab forward. And uh, that sure makes it run a heck of a lot better than uh, just a four-wheel pickup, I'll tell you that. I think that Chemtron packaged them a couple ways. You could buy just the cab front with the cow catcher. You could buy just the trucks. I think you could buy them as a combination kit. But anyway, so that's two Chemtron add-ons here. And then Chemtron... Mod, uh, sold a complete valve gear upgrade for the Little Joe. And that's what you see here on the uh, front of the locomotive. And let me just zoom in a little bit on that so you can see that versus that. So, you know, how rare are these? Well, I'll tell you. In the case of the Little Joe, I would say maybe at least once a month I see a Little Joe up on eBay that's got the uh, upgraded valve gear. Uh, a little rarer, but still several times a year you'll see it with the cab forward uh, kit on it too. So these are being uh, sold on the used market with their upgrades. With some reasonable, I mean, with a little bit of patience, you can look and you can pick one of those up. What I'm now going to do is, first of all, show you this upgraded one running a little bit to uh, kind of show you how nicely it runs. So we'll go over to the test track and do that. But when we come back to this table, I want to talk about similar valve gear upgrades that were available in the Tyco Mantua line and are very rarely seen actually added to the locomotives. And we'll pick up that discussion uh, when we start again. But first, let's go see this little guy run. Okay, over on the test track, and uh, let's just see how nicely this uh, Varney Little Joe runs with those Chemtron upgrades. And I'll Put it down at a pretty low speed to show you a creeping along. And a little faster speed here. Let me zoom in a bit here so you can see those valve gears in action a little bit. And I'll move the light to kind of highlight the, the valve gear area. And let's see how we do. Creeping along there. Just a beautiful thing to see. So there it is, upgraded with the valve gear. Makes a big difference, and this one runs like a gem. Uh, sometime I'll show you uh, my dad's run, and you'll see that wobble, and see that there's really no comparison uh, between uh, that, and let me just move it forward a little bit so it's somewhat centered in the screen here. Okay, and zoom in. But uh, very nice locomotive. I picked this up a while back, did a video on it. It was the one in which I basically asked uh, the question, 
you know, when is enough enough in terms of accumulating uh, locomotives. But it was a package deal of three locomotives. All of them were uh, 040s. Well, this, of course, has the uh, Chemtron add-on uh, truck, but uh, initially it was an 040. Uh, three of them for uh, the princely sum of $40, and uh, this beauty was in there. But uh, anyway, uh, we'll pick up and uh, take a look at what was available in the Tyco uh, Mantua line for their smaller locomotives, including uh, their 040s and 060s. So I'll see you then. So we've been talking about uh, the addition of uh, additional detailing on the valve gear, and uh, in particular how, I won't say they were common, but certainly not rare, those upgrade kits were on uh, Varney's Little Joe, and what you're looking at there is the uh, upgrade valve gear uh, on this Little Joe engine. And, uh, you know, I had never seen those kits available for anybody else, <clears throat> nor in looking at an awful lot of videos uh, and uh, always being online looking at uh, used locomotive and locomotive kits, had I seen any of the small Tyco or Mantua um, locomotives with such a uh, upgrade kit. And then I ended up getting a uh, Mantua shifter, although it had been assembled already, it was uh, still in its original box, and it had with it the original paperwork, and down in the bottom left-hand corner of the first page was an ad uh, for a working valve gear set that you could add to your shifter um, and if you look at uh, the various parts of uh, this set of valve gears, you'll see that it's very similar to what we were just looking at on the Little Joe. So it surprised me. And once I saw this, I became more observant as I looked on eBay and the other auction sites and on YouTube videos from other YouTubers who uh, have little Joe engines and uh, shifter engines and so forth. And once again, it turned out to be the case that they were not tremendously uncommon on little Joes, but I have yet to see one um, on a uh, Mantua or Tyco shifter. Uh, and yet here they were for $1.95. Now this kit that I uh, came across, I'll show you the box in a minute back out a little bit. There's the, uh, the box, and if you look at the end of the box, you will see that the price was $11.95, and that was from 1960, because the paperwork is inside with the date that the person uh, purchased it. And so, uh, a, $1.95 is, oh, someplace between uh, maybe 12 and 15 percent uh, of the original purchase price. And I'm not sure whether it was the cost of the uh, add-on that was prohibitive or the fact that you had to, you know, take the time to uh, send money into uh, Mantua Tyco at their New Jersey address or whether just the number of details that are involved with it and assembling all these little titty bits here with uh, what turned out to be uh, mostly rivets um, turned people off. But I still am yet to see one assembled on a Mantua shifter um, or on their other small locomotives. But what it did do was uh, it sent me off looking, saying they got to be out there someplace, maybe not in huge quantities, but um, so I started looking for uh, this add-on set. If you look at it, you know, I'm not sure it's an exact replica of any particular valve gear. 
It possesses a lot of the parts of uh, the Walshart's valve gear uh, and the Baker valve gear. And I'm not a valve gear expert, but I would think they're at least loosely based on those. Um, <clears throat> but as you look at this, and again, I, I think what I'm going to do is uh, zoom in a little bit because I want to point to a few things. All right, so each of these levers and connecting rods and so forth uh, are individual pieces. And uh, again, although I'm not an expert, I know I see there uh, the eccentric crank and the eccentric rod. Um, I see a expansion link and radius bar. I see what's called the union link and the combination lever. I see various parts. And in a minute, we'll see how large or small they are. And all of these little white dots, one, two up there, one, two down here, uh, two up here on this lever, uh, another one down here, one here, those are all rivets. And, uh, you know, assembling rivets can turn some people off because it's not quite as simple as if you had a little screw or um, anything else because you have to insert the rivet and then uh, flange it over. While I am just looking at the various parts of the valve gear, let me show you some of the things that you can now find online if you want to do more research. And maybe I'll put a link to uh, something like this. But here's the breakdown of the wall charts of valve gear. And um, you can go onto YouTube and you can find these things um, in uh, able to be uh, put into motion so you can see all the action and so forth. And maybe I'll put a link to that in the description here. So that's a wall shorts and you see a lot of those same levers and um, connecting rods and so forth on this, uh, both the little Joe and what they showed in the picture for, uh, for the uh, Tyco Mantua. Now, let's talk about assembling uh, rivets for a moment and then we'll go on. But when you have rivets, you're going to need something that's uh, sturdy to uh, tap them against. And I use this piece of steel that my father gave me, but you can use a, an anvil or whatever. But it's good to have it on a sturdy piece of metal. And uh, the idea would be to take two, let's say, of uh, the component pieces. So again, if you look here, let me once again go in a little bit. Let's say you were going to start with uh, this little connecting rod here and this lever, and uh, you want to put this rivet in place. What you would do is uh, take the one that's on the bottom, which is this little one, and insert the rivet from behind, and then lay this lever over top of it, so you have the head of the rivet down on the metal, Go back out so we can see what I'm talking about here. You're going to lay the assembly down on here with the head of the rivet on the metal, the two rods on top of that, and then the uh, part of the rivet that you want to flange is uh, pointing upward. And uh, my little rivet tool, which I got from uh, a Bowser kit, is uh, tapered, as I think you can see. And down on this end, it's like a little cup with a... Uh, protrusion in the middle. You're going to put that over the top of the rivet and then tap, 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 tap until you get the flange holding uh, the two pieces together. Once they're moving freely and uh, you have it where you want it, you're going to add one more piece to the puzzle and you continue to assemble uh, pretty much all of this sub-assembly before you attach it to the connecting rod um, and the main rod. So yeah, it's a little fussy, but uh, certainly it can be done. 
All right, so I told you I started uh, going out there in the real world searching for this and uh, a set of these and uh, they were a dollar uh, 95 in 1960 and adjusting for inflation that would mean that dollar 95 cost today would be somewhere between 19 and 20 dollars add to that the fact that these are out of production and fairly rare and you know that they're going to cost you more than that twenty dollars so uh, you know I was expecting you know a price of anywhere from twenty five to thirty five dollars if I could find an unused set of these. Diligence paid off and uh, not too long ago up popped this set. So it's part number 754 from Mantua Metal Products. It's the valve gear kit. You can see in there some tiny little bits of uh, connecting pieces and levers. Let's see if I can get it a little bit more blown up. And this little guy right here under the word gear is one of the rivets. And uh, in here, there's got to be somewhere between uh, uh, 16 and 20 rivets that have to be, be installed. All the parts are in here. This has never been opened. It's factory sealed. And uh, I'm not going to open it now, although I would like to read the instructions. Uh, I'm going to leave everything stapled closed because knowing me, once I open that, um, chances of me losing some rivets or some of the pieces are fairly great. I paid in that range of uh, that I was expecting to pay. This, this set cost me 30 bucks and I didn't hesitate. I jumped on it because I had been looking for a couple months and not seen anything and uh, as I said it's uh, I don't think very many of these were sold because I've never seen one set installed. They are good for their kits and I think you can see that. 209, 213, 217, 218. What kits are those? It's their four smallest locomotives in the Mantua Tyco line. It's their 040, what they call their booster. So you could get install this set over here on and that would add to the valve gear on that. It's their 040 shifter. It's their two O six O's, the two of them. One they call their little six, and one they call their big six. Uh, the little six looks very much like this booster. It's a, a tank engine with square tanks, but with six drive wheels. And their O six O big six looks like this. And. Uh, I'm not sure yet. I got a lot of shifters. Those of you who follow me, you know I got a lot of those shifters. I probably have a half a dozen that I've restored. So I could put it on the shifter. You see I have a booster. But my really think I'm going to do is probably when I assemble, and this package is still uh, shrink wrap from the factory, but when I assemble this uh, Big Six 060, uh, I think I will be putting that detailed valve gear on this. So that's it. I really just wanted to talk about, uh, you know, the, the time period where modelers were not only assembling uh, their steam locomotives from kits, but then went on and uh, started putting added detail parts, and in particular on these little guys like the Barney Little Joe. One of the things that was common to add was the uh, detailed valve gear. And now I have the kit to do that to one of the small um, Tyco Mantuas. And when I do it, I'll make a video of it so you can see the work in progress. And in the meantime, I'll probably look for one more of these yet. Um, not going to go crazy, but uh, if I can find another set that's still sealed in the package, I'll probably jump on it. Okay, that's it for uh, now. Um, if you 
enjoyed the video, as always, I urge you to uh, give it a like. And if you haven't already, I would be very pleased if you would subscribe to my channel. See you again soon.